Welcome to Design Downtime, the podcast where we celebrate the joys of living a balanced, creative life. I'm your host, Guy Siegel, a design director in Toronto, Canada, and I invite you to join me on this journey as we redefine what it means to be a successful design professional. Let's break free from the shackles of hustle culture and embrace the full spectrum of human experience, because life is too precious to be spent only in pursuit of productivity. Today, I'm delighted to be talking with PJ Onori. PJ has been working on software for close to 20 years and has been most focused on design systems for the past decade. He's worked for companies like Adaptive Path, Disney, and Pinterest. PJ, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. Also, that was incredible. That was one take, everyone. I was very, I'm very impressed with that intro. That was, uh, that was very, very good. I would, it would have taken me half an hour and 20 takes to get, get that. So, well done. This, this is the result of, of uh, multiple takes, let's say. Yeah, a lot of practice to get to that point. But nonetheless, I'm very impressed. So anyways, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to chat. Excited to have you. So uh, you wanted to talk about photography. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I have been doing that since, geez, since college, which was five years ago. I'm kidding. It was a very long time ago. Uh, and it's been one of those things that's been, um, great for me, uh, just to keep my head straight. It's, uh, this industry can be hard to, you know, to keep a level head. And so it's been one of the, the, the grounding hobbies that I've had, um, in, you know, for the past 10 or 15 years. I really like to start in the beginnings and these kind of like the origin stories of how you got into photography. So it was in art school. I switched majors for the, for the fourth time in college. I was not a great college student. I'm, I'm curious to know what, you, uh, what were your majors before that? <laughs> Environmental science, because I have no idea. Actually, it was three majors. So that shows you how much I'm familiar with it. And then it was computer science. I bounced out of computer science once I hit assembly language, where it took four lines of code to add numbers. I thought, this ain't, this ain't for me. Um, and then I got into, I went to art school specifically because I was toying a lot with interfaces. That's why I got into computer science to begin with, because I wanted to make software for people to use. And then lo and behold, I ended up being a, you know, essentially a math minor, uh, which ain't my house. So I get into art school way late. So it's, you know, equivalent of like junior year. And, uh, my, my first graphic design course, they said, I need to get a camera. I'd never, ever used a camera in my life. And so what do I end up getting? Cause this is going to date me a bit. I get an old, uh, Nicromat FT2, which is about as manual as it gets. The one like feature it has, it has a light meter in it. Um, but like no auto aperture, no auto anything. Um, and I get a, uh, a 50, I'm great. Like assuming everyone knows it's a manual focus camera as well. And now I got to start taking photos for fricking projects. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. And so that ended up being the most, you know, backed in good decision I've made in a while because it really got me, uh, get my hands dirty in the, the practice of photography, not just pressing a button and a, a magical picture shows up. And this was also, mind you, when digital photography was around. I'm not that old. There were digital cameras around. It's just, I was given a manual film camera and I was broke off my ass. I mean, to the point where there were days where I had to choose whether I was going to eat or I was going to finish my art project in terms of like the the materials that I needed. So like, if I get a free camera, I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use that camera. So that ended up, you know, a getting me into photography and B my whole foundation was built on manual, you know, do it yourself, do it all by yourself kind of cameras. So, so this is fascinating because usually people get into these hobbies or interests where, you know, they they dabble in it and then something you know, something pushes them to, to dive a bit deeper, but, but here it sounds like you, you, this was essentially your first introduction to photography, like that, like art, yeah. art school forcing you, so to speak. That's a lot. <laughs> that's how a lot of great decisions in life have been made. Uh, just like, well, I, I gotta do this now. 
Um, and sometimes they're personal. You know, I ended up making a, a typeface not too long ago. And did I have to do that? Absolutely not. But in some regards, I had some time off and I thought, ain't going to happen unless it happens now. Um, and so while it was voluntary, it was almost a forced voluntary of, hey, if you're going to do this, you've been wanting to do this for 20 years. If you're going to do this, now's the time. Uh, and so a lot, I've noticed a lot of my decisions are like, well, this is, I guess I'm doing this. And, uh, I actually enjoy that. It kind of takes the choice out of the decision and you just gotta, just gotta figure out how to make it happen. So that really was it. It's just like your first project is due in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta figure this out. And, and did you need to also develop the photos yourself? Uh, no, luckily not. Um, so I sent it to a, a one hour processor and then I scanned it. So that was the line. I had a, an old friend who's been wanting me to develop my own film and like process it and print it. Uh, and I just have never been able to go over that hill of spending, you know, three hours in a dark room for one image. I just, I just can't do that. It just can't get through my head that that's something that I'm, I got two kids, man, like three hours, three hours to, to, to print a photo. Man, my, you know, my wife would reasonably for, he you know, has all the right to kill me. My kids would be, you know, like, where the hell are you? What are you doing? Like, let's go watch Bluey or something. Let's not, let's not process photos. So you had that, that, that first class of photography. What were some of those first assignments? It was really abstract. It was like super art school, uh, where it was just like, have a concept and like, you know, you know, like do it. Uh, and it was like, looking back, those projects were just so ephemeral and art schooly. Uh, but it was good because it just allowed me to, to just mess around. Cause I needed to figure out what the hell I was doing on so many levels. I had to figure out what the hell I was doing with the camera, what the hell I was doing in art school, what the hell I was doing in life. Um, and so it was good just to have something a little squishy because it gave me room to, instead of like, shoot this, take a photo of this tree. Like, oh, you know, it, it, I think it was good where I had to figure it out. And along the way, I had to figure out how to use the damn camera to figure it out, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So, so what was the, uh, sort of the first theme you picked? It was a triptych. Uh, and it was, oh, man, it was like, it made no sense. And I, I remember like the art, the teacher loved it. This, I remember one of the people in the class was like, I have no idea what this is trying to say. And in retrospect, I'm like, man, you are much more right than the teacher was. It was like a triptych of three images. Like one was a fire. One was of like a beam of light. And then another, I don't even remember. It was so art school, like, uh, but it was good, right? Like it was good for me. Like, that's what I need. I just need to be able to play and mess around. And so was it a successful art slash photography project? Absolutely not. Was it kind of what I needed at the time to, to, to grow this interest in photography? Absolutely. I'm assuming you got better with time. When did you start, uh, when did you become proud of what you were producing? I'm still not, <laughs> I'm still not proud of what I'm producing, to be honest with you. I think, so I dabbled in it for a long time long time just for fun uh wasn't really pushing myself until 2014 and that's when i decided i really want to take it seriously and and it's a problem that i admit but when i decide to take something seriously i take it real seriously so i was out taking photos almost every day hours at a time um, luckily at that point I co-owned a business with two other folks. And so we were our own bosses and I would, you know, all right, I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna take an hour and just walk around. Uh, it helped me clear my head, which is great. It just helped me practice. So, I mean, I was out there all the time. There were days where I'd be out eight hours, just walking San Francisco for eight hours, you know, by the end of it. You know, I'm just like, my feet hurt, everything hurts, but 900 photos later, maybe I get three photos that are decent. Um, and, 
I think just the process of doing it was, was what I was more proud of because I was putting in so much work and I was, I was improving, but I still wasn't necessarily proud of it. It's a really hard, it's a really hard practice. It's really hard. As you're getting more into photography, of course, you start to understand it more and you start understand the process, understand, like you said, it's, you get more into the nuance of what would be a good photo and what wouldn't be. So what, what is the, what are the things that are, you know, you, where you feel you're still falling short, where, why it's not the, you know, why are you not proud of it? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, so w one thing worth mentioning is I decided I was shooting street. So I was out on, in San Francisco, just shooting scenes, people in downtown San Francisco. So in that case, a lot of it, you're at the mercy of reality, not like a landscape shot where that tree is going to be there and again, stay there every single day. Um, you got, usually it's a fraction of a second. Uh, you know, I, I typically thought about a third of a second to, to get the photo. So a lot of this was, there were so many, how many ways can I fail? Let me count them. Um, first off was, am I from a, from a technical standpoint, am I on, am I on point? Uh, can I, can I make sure that I'm hitting focus on a, on a constant basis? Um, I needed to get to the point where I could, I could, uh, um, meter with my eyes. So I look at that and I'm like, oh, that's ISO 1600 F I always shot F 11, F 11, uh, at about like, you know, one five hundredth of a second because the light meter is super, the light meter I was using was super unpredictable. So like uh, an example, let's say you're taking a photo of someone, uh, that's walking in front of a completely back black background. There's a good chance the meter's going to see that all that black and be like, oh, this is dark as hell. All right, slow down the shutter speed. And then you've overexposed. So I, I happened enough times like, well, screw this. I got to just learn how to meter on my own. So like, all right, first off technical second off, are you in the right place at the right time? Obviously some of that is out of your control, right? Like the, the scene is going to happen or it's not going to happen, but there's a lot of pre prep. So you're trying to visualize something, try to predict whether a scene is going to be interesting in the future. And then how do I position myself to set myself up for success? So like a, from a lighting perspective, where am I in, in relation to the light source? Um, given that it's downtown San Francisco, there's a ton of people. Am I creating a seam to where I can take a photo, right? Like there's all these just like real tactical things to just get yourself into the position. And then like, oh, by the way, <laughs> there just happens to be like, I don't know, composition. And are you communicating at the right time? Did you take it? Did you take the photo too soon or too late? Uh, so that's where the, that's the, that next step of, uh, especially um, the style of photography that I tended to gravitate towards was trying to have a lot of information in there and have it all be readable, but not just like a person, a thing, right? Like try to have a lot of things going on to where it all kind of fit together. Um, so there's a lot to look at, um, but not in some discordant, chaotic way. That's really that's really hard at baseline. And if you talk to a lot of street photographers, they're like, man, I get like one or two good photos a year because it's so hard. There's just so much variance that you have to account for. Um, so I think that's probably the, the area where I, I still don't think that I'm, you know, I'm not as good as I'd like to be. And I don't even do this anymore. So it's not like it's going to happen. I moved out to the burbs. We have two kids. So like that part of my life is over. Um, but that was the thing that I was starting to work on at the end. I think in the other challenging thing is that I wasn't showing this to anyone, um, a, because the style of photography that I like, it just flat out don't work on a phone, like show that on Instagram. I'm like, Oh, there's all this detail. And I'm looking at it the size of a, of a stamp. Like, it's just, I think that like mobile photography and like displaying photography on a mobile phone really 
is optimized for like, I'm going to take a photo of one thing. Like it's just one like very simple photo. It can be small and you can still get the gist of it. But like all these details are just going to be missed on a photo that small. So if I were to get back into it again, I think that's where I would like to really focus in on is how can I have a lot of things in the scene, but have each thing be readable, have each thing work with each other. And a lot of that in ultimately is up to chance, but I think subconsciously you get good about placing things in the scene uh, to where they work together. That was a really long winded way of answering that, but, but it's tough because there's just a lot to the, to the thing. So, so you said you sort of gravitated towards uh, street photography, right? Walking yeah. around San Francisco, trying to find uh, sort of combinations of, uh, you know, a vibe and people and, and architecture and mood and those kind of things. Did you try any sort of other types of photography? I'm, well, so one photography I do to this day is just I photograph our family all the time. Um, and I, funny enough, I take a lot of what I've, a lot of the type of photography I did in street, which is candid, unscripted moments. I am never saying to the kids, all right, stand in front, look at me, smile. It's much more of just observing the shenanigans that they're up to on a daily basis and trying to capture it, um, to where they're not looking at me. They're just living life. And we've documented that little slice of their existence um and now i'm i'm trying to figure out okay you know what's next um a, a lot of it is more photographing scenery uh, i still can't get myself to do landscape but just general scenery um in in the, in the town that i'm at and more broadly and just seeing things that are interesting to me um but aren't necessarily something you would see in a uh like a like a i don't know a hallmark calendar or something um, and so that's, that's what I'm trying to do next. Cause I still want to do it. Um, it's something I still find a ton of joy in. It's just, I mean, geez, in San Francisco is so easy. I took a BART, like a 15 minute BART ride to downtown and every single day, every single minute of every single day, there was something new, right? I didn't have to change my scenery. I didn't have to change my location. I just like could look at the watch. And when I look back up, there's a new, there's a new scene to photograph. It's not as easy with this to where like, okay, this is the fifth time I've gone to this place. It's still the same place. <laughs> it hasn't changed. Like I've kind of done this. Right. And, and, and I know there's plenty of photographers that'll go back to the same scene and shoot the same thing to try to perfect it. That just ain't me. Uh, I want like new stuff, new stuff, like different, different, different. Um, and so that's why street was so interesting to me because it's just like, man, you turn the corner and it's like, you're in a different world. Um, and I, I do miss that. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how can I have some of that, um, while not being conveniently located in a high Metro area to do that. You, you mentioned that you, you never really sort of shared those photos publicly. Yeah. Um, so has, who has seen those photos? Um, colleagues, um, other photographers, I mean, I, it's online. I just don't make a big deal about it. I'm not on Instagram. Um, I don't really care about sharing. That wasn't the purpose of it. Um, I knew I was never going to be famous or rich or both. So it, it just, honestly, it was, it became a distraction that I wasn't really interested in. Um, my family sees all the family photos, obviously. Um, my wife, you know, it's a big part of of how, you know, we view the, the time with our children. Every year I make a book for both of our kids, um, one book for each kid, which out, you know, like basically documents their year. Um, and so we have all these books. It's a big part of like the holidays. That's one of the gifts that the family gets. Um, and so I think my, the most important photography I'm ever going to do is for my family. Um, and that will only be seen by a handful of people. And that's perfect. That's all that, that's all I need. The other photography is really for me because I just, I want to try to get better. I know when I 
feel like I've taken a good photo? Do I care if other people think it's a good photo? Not, not really. Like, doesn't really matter. So I have goals that I, for myself, of, of the kind of photos I want to take, and I hope to get there. Um, and I don't really have any need to have that validated by other people. Do you ever go back and, just for yourself, revisit those photos? I do. I do. And funny enough, uh, time is not a a friendly <laughs> a friendly mistress in terms of those photos. I think one thing about any creative pursuit is that I think early on it's your, it's your baby. And that's probably the worst thing for especially for photography that you can do that you you want to like this photo. You took it, right? Like I worked so hard on this photo. It must be good, right? That fallacy. Um I think really good photographers are able to disassociate and just say, is this a good photo or not? Like I just took it and it was super challenging, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Is it a good photo? Is it not a good photo? Um, it, I'm not as good as them. And so it takes me a little bit of time. And so when I go back and look at them, I'm like, why? Who cares? Like who would care about this photo? What? It's not, it's not really good. Um, and so if I went back and paired and basically re-edited some of my projects, uh, it would, de they'd definitely be smaller. Um, because I don't think they, I think there's a lot of them that are, that aren't really adding to them. So, uh, I still go back and look at them, uh, because I think it's important to review your own work, not as much as I'd, you know, I'd like to. Um, but it is interesting to see just how less precious I am about some of the older photos than I was, you know, s you know, th six days after I took it. Mm -hmm. So you started with a, a manual focus camera. How has your equipment evolved since? Uh, it's funny, not much, um, in some ways a lot, in other ways, not much. So I still shoot with a manual camera. It's a, it only shoots in black and white. Um, it's a digital camera. And when you tell people that they look at you like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> like a digital, wait, what? A digital black and white? Like, what are you talking about? Um, makes no sense. Uh, and I agree. I basically say you're right. I am weird. Um, I, not too long ago, I decided to stop shooting in color because it was just too much. I wanted to, I'm a big reductionist and I wanted to remove that. It wasn't helping my photos. Uh, the more I looked at it, perfect example is you get a photo and like, oh, that's interesting. And then there's some stupid sign in the background that's red and like, ah, like it takes, it's taken all the attention. Um, color is, I have a real rough relationship with color in general, uh, especially in photography. So I really wanted to focus purely on the subject and there's no shade on folks that shoot with color. There's clearly hundreds and thousands of photographers that'll be better than I will ever be that shoot in color and, and utilize it. Well, it's not me. So I decided to go completely black and white, um, just to focus in on, on the subject matter and re remove that, that variable. So I could just focus in on on composition and, uh, and subject matter. Um, and it's been great. Cause just the other reason not to get too into the weeds is I hate, uh, fiddling in, in post production. And the thing that would constantly get me is the effing white balance just drove me nuts. Like, you know, it's shot and like, like uh, fluorescent and like, it's got this green cast and I can never quite get it right. And I'm constantly like spot, like trying to spot adjust and it just never looks right. And like, you know, I could like, I have one preset that I would always use and, you know, I'd constantly be tweaking that thing and just none of that is taking a photo. And so I just, it was taking too much oxygen from the room. So I just, just get rid of it. That makes sense. So obviously photography plays a very different part of your life now versus when you started or as you were, you know, as you said, you were going every day to San Francisco and, and, and just shooting street scenes. So first of all, is it still a, maybe not a major part, but an important part of your life? Yeah, it's a huge part of my life. It'll probably always be a huge part of my life. Um, I know when I'm not doing it, 
it's like I'm, you know, I'm missing breaths. Um, it helps me clear my head. Uh, it helps me, I get to walk around. I get to just not think about stuff. Uh, I, you know, we took a vacation recently and I was able to go out and take photos. I was like, Shh, man, I got to do this. I got to do this more. Um, and then like, it's, you know, probably the biggest gift I'll be able to give my kids. Um, it's just like, look, your whole life is documented every single year of your life. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that there'll be something that they can, that they can keep for as long as they're alive. Um, and then their kids can keep. Um, so it's, it's not even, it's not about me anymore. It's, you know, it, I'm, if this, I'm hoping this is something my kids appreciate. <laughs> um, and if they do, it's, it's, it's something that I want to do for them. So in some regards, it's not even, doesn't even matter if it's important to me. Um, it's something really important to the family. So, so that's a big reason why I still try to do it. It has not been happening enough lately. Um, and so it's a, it's a good reminder that I need to like, I need to stop all the other gobbledygook that I'm doing and just take the time to go out and take photos. Are, are they showing any interest? Yeah. So, um, it's tough because, um, they can't use this camera. It's not fair to them. I'm like, okay, here's how to, this is how you zone focus. Like, I was like, I'm, I want to watch, like, I'm five years old. What are you talking about? Zone focus. So, uh, so we, they use the, um, our phones a lot mm -hmm. for photos, but I have a feeling it'll be for different reasons, uh, than myself. But, um, I think they, I think it's still magical to them that this, you know, a little device can, can stop time and, and take a photo. And I think, uh, I've gone on a few photo walks with the kids, nothing too seriously, but I could see that growing on them. Um, it's just that the, that the gear I have is not necessarily conducive to, um, it's not kid friendly, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if they are really serious about it, then, um, I would love to, I would love to encourage that, but I don't want to push it down their throats either. Yeah. Are you interested in it as, as an art form in general? Do you go and seek photographers or exhibitions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's, it's hard to beat a good photograph. Um, I'm a big fan of Matt Black, uh, who's, a he's in the California central Valley area and he, man, he like, he documents essentially he's a, he's a documentarian. I think he's affiliated with Magnum photos, which is like a super big deal in and of itself. He, um, documents poverty in the United States. Um, I think the thing that I'm the photo photographers I'm impressed with are less about the photos and more about their ability to put themselves into really challenging positions and document that. And another photographer that, oh man, talk about a gut wrencher. Um, her name's Darcy Padilla and she did a project, um, called family love where she documented like for almost like two decades, a family that was living in, uh, San Francisco SROs, the mother contracted HIV, gave birth to a child and then documented her death. They moved out to Alaska, like documented this whole thing for like roughly 20 years. Holy sh! Like I see that and I'm like, I've just, I'm just never, <laughs> just never going to be able to do that. Like it's just not even from a photography standpoint, just the ability to engage with these families, stick with it for 20 years, like take amazing. Oh, by the way, take amazing photos, but like all the work she did to take those amazing photos, uh, the level of commitment to the project, like those are the things that really, that I really respect. And the fact that Matt Black would get on an Amtrak bus and like bus across the United States and stop in towns and like meet people and talk to them and photograph like, holy like that's the skill and then they have oh by the way they have a camera and they take photos <laughs> but like it's all that other stuff and to me that's uh really powerful um being in silicon valley you see a lot of bs and a lot of hyperbole and a lot of gobbledygook and uh, i think i've really gravitated towards 
documentarians that are just like this this is what it is like i'm not gonna like shine it up for you it's like this is you can take what you will out of this thing that is just out there for you to to make out of it what you will um and they obviously have a point of view that they're trying to articulate but it's much more a thing that you can digest how you will whereas so much of silicon valley is like here we want you to think this thing like we're going to push you in this direction and i love the idea of a photo that slows you down and just forces you to take it in and make of it what you will that's amazing um pj where can people find you um i have <laughs> i have a website um i'm not i I think probably the best place you can go is pjonore.com and it will take you to all the, I have a blog and blah, blah, blah. But really I'd say just, just go there or not. Um, that, that's probably the best place to find me. Awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for talking to us today. Thank you, man. This is all for this episode of Design Downtime. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, I hope you enjoy your downtime. <laughs>